Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see classification of engineering materials. We have all these courses available on our Thinkific platform. To learn more about these courses, register with the link given in the description. Now, most important part, classification of material. What are the two broad categories, guys? Do you remember two broad categories? We as a pressure vessel design engineer follow for classification of material. Exactly, Arbaz. Exactly. Ferrous and the second is non-ferrous, right? These are the two broad categories in which we classify the material. Ferrous, if I have iron percentage more than 50%, it becomes ferrous, right? It's kind of stake. If you have more than 50% stake in a company, that company is yours, right? So like that, the percentage is more than 50, then it is named with the name of that element, which is iron. Okay. So pretty clear, ferrous and non-ferrous. Okay. Now let us further classify them. Ferrous, non-ferrous, we have already discussed. Now in ferrous, because that is what we are going to use most of the time. So in ferrous, what are the different categories? How further ferrous is classified? First is carbon steel. Second, low alloy steel. Okay, carbon steel, low alloy steel. Third is high alloy steel. Correct, Siva. Okay, so carbon steel. We just talk about the carbon percentage. That is the most important alloying element in carbon steel. We talk about further elements, but because the name itself, you know, carbon steel, the main alloying element is carbon. Okay, and the percentage varies from 0.05 to 1.5 percent. Okay. That is your carbon steel. Low alloying steel, mainly, what is the alloying element? Guys, in low alloy steel, just be quick. Low alloy steel, I know you might have used many times. 387, SA387, P91, P1. Vanadium is there, but yeah, the mean is chromium molybdenum, not nickel also there. So chrome moly, because we call them chrome moly steel, right? Sometimes added vanadium like modified P91, where that vanadium is added. So mainly chromium and molybdenum, those are the element which are there. And if percentage is less than 5%, we call them low alloy steel. Okay. Just remember it very broadly. We are going to further classify based on temperature also. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to make it very, very simple for you. Okay. The intention is not to learn everything, but learn particular thing which is going to be really really important and these are the things which we have to remember also okay the third is higher alloy steel in higher alloy steel if my alloying percentage is more than 10 percent we call it high alloy steel now which is the steel mainly we use when we talk about high alloy steel which is the most famous most widely yes absolutely right s s stainless steel that is a high alloy steel which we use most of the time. Okay. Great. So in ferrous, we have three categories carbon steel, low alloy, and high alloy. Okay. Carbon steel governed by carbon percentage, low alloy steel, chromium and molybdenum. High alloy steel, as we can think of SS when we talk about high alloy. Okay. Very simple. Now, what? What is next? In non-ferrous, the mainly three uh, categories or types which we use is monal, inconal, and incoloy. Okay, we'll talk about them also. So these are the three more or most widely used non-ferrous in pressure vessel. Okay. Please remember, we are talking about only pressure vessel industry. Okay. Now, okay, let us further go to the next level so carbon low alloy and high alloy are three categories of ferrous now carbon still 
is further classified into three low carbon medium carbon and high carbon okay carbon influences your strength of material very widely so you, you can see here that low carbon still is from 0 0.05 to 0.3 percent medium from 0.35 to 0.55 high is 0.55 to 1.5 okay so based on how much carbon percentage is there in that carbon still we have further classified into three low carbon medium carbon and high carbon now one quick question whether we use all of them in pressure vessel low carbon medium and high carbon which one of these okay great we don't use all of them yes which one of them we use for pressure vessel only low carbon still okay so it's further simplified so you don't have to be worried about medium and high carbon only we have to focus on the low carbon still which is only we use for pressure vessel industry why we don't use medium or high carbon guys why we don't use medium carbon steel and high carbon still in pressure vessel industry weldability issues exactly exactly great so medium and high carbon steel are difficult to weld okay so ajay is also right they become brittle they become very hard when we weld and it will crack you know crack happens and they will not be able to sustain any pressure okay so medium and high carbon we don't use we only use low carbon still in pressure vessel industry great really nice and in high LR still we have already discussed that stainless steel is what we are going to talk about so no big deal in that okay so finally it boils down to only two or three major materials which we use in pressure vessel industry okay and what are those low carbon still low alloy still where we talk about chrome moly still and stainless steel okay so just focus on these three making sense and this is the uh, these are the three which we will be using most of the time okay now let us build upon that a little bit stainless steel can be austenitic ferritic and martin stick will I hope you understood this part. Stay tuned with us. Do watch our other videos related to the material.